Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. A special welcome to any guests or visitors that we have with us. We're, we're glad you're worshiping with us here this evening. As this is also the service that goes on the radio and TV and is streamed online, we welcome all those who are worshiping with us there. For those on the radio, I, Pastor Nick Quinette, will be conducting the service, and our preacher is Pastor Tim Miller, and our organist is Mrs. Becky Fisher. Today's focus for worship, is, as, we're, as we're going through our greatest needs, is the theme for these Lenten Sundays. The, today's theme, though, is our greatest need, a gift for the world. After the service, I invite you all to take these truths from that we learn from God's Word and apply it to your lives. We continue now with the opening hymn, hymn number 525, The Lamb. <laughs> service for this evening is the service setting one found in the blue hymnal. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us, according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all your sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you see that we have no power to defend ourselves. Guard and keep us both outwardly and inwardly from all advers adversities that may happen to the body and all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country and away from your relatives and from your father's house and go to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse anyone who dishonors you. All the families of the earth will be blessed in you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took Sarai, his wife, his lot, lot, his brother's son, and all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to travel to the land of Canaan. Eventually, they arrived in the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land until he came to the Oka of Morah at the place called Shechem. The Canaanites were in the land at that time. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. Abram built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. He moved on from there to the hill country east of Bethel and pitched his tent there, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. We continue with the psalm, Psalm 121a, I left my eyes up to the mountains.
Our second reading comes from Romans chapter 4. What then, will, what then will we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered according to the flesh? If indeed Abraham had been justified by works, he would have had a reason to boast, but not before God. For what does Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, to a person who works, his pay is not counted as a gift, but as something owed. But to the person who does not work, but believes in God, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited to him as righteousness. Indeed, the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not given to Abraham or his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness that is by faith. To be sure, if people are heirs by the law, faith is empty and the promise is nullified. For law brings wrath. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. For this reason, the promise is by faith, so that, it may, so that it may be according to grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's descendants, not only to the one who is a descendant by law, but also to the one who has the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of God, Abraham believed him who makes the dead alive and calls non-existing things so that they exist. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation and the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Our gospel reading for tonight comes from John chapter 3 and serves as our sermon text. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these miraculous signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus replied, Amen, amen, I tell you. Unless someone is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I tell you. Unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised when I tell you that you must be born from above. The wind blows where it pleases. You hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? asked Nicodemus. You are the teacher of Israel, Jesus answered, and you do not know these things? Amen, amen, I tell you. We speak what we know, and we testify about what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I t tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord You may be seated. At this time, please fill out the attendance cards that can be found in the pew in front of you. Another option is to use the QR code, which you can find up on the screen and also in the bulletin. For those worshiping with us online, you can also find a link above or below the video. Thank you for your cooperation. We continue with the next hymn, hymn number 570, God Loved the World So That He Gave.
May God our Lord lead us to a greater appreciation of his gift of salvation and his gift of faith. Dear Christians who are born again by the power of God. When a baby is born, it's a joyful time, isn't it? It's a happy time, and it should be. You look at that baby, and you see such a cute and cuddly and warm baby, and every child is a blessing from God. It's a wonderful time. But then we also know that when that baby is born, that baby is born sinful. The Bible says that clearly. Sin passes down from generation to generation, all the way back from when Adam and Eve fell into sin. And it's indicated here in our text as it talks about how flesh gives birth to flesh. And so it's essential that an individual is born again. In fact, the first birth pales in comparison to the second birth, being born again into God's family. That phrase, however, born again, has been misused over and over by people and by churches. There are those who will speak about how they know exactly when they were born again. It was this day, at this hour, and this second, they will say that they decided to believe in Jesus. They had made the decision to believe in Jesus. And often you will see that individual almost proud and boasting of how they brought themselves to faith. And that is not from God. Because faith comes as a gift from God. We're going to take a look today at how all Christians in Christ are born Again, not naturally, not by our ability, but spiritually by the hand of God. We are introduced to a man by the name of Nicodemus through our text. This man came to Jesus at night. And you can easily figure out why he came at night. He was a Pharisee. He was from that group that wanted, in general, to kill Jesus, to do away from him. Do away with him. But Nicodemus, he had heard about Jesus, his miraculous miracles, and so he wanted to know more. So he came to Jesus at night. And Jesus told him that one needs to be born again to be part of the kingdom of God, to be in the family of God. But Nicodemus was having a hard time with this. He was having a difficult time. And Jesus said, you need to be born from above. I like that translation. It is a good translation. Evangelical Heritage Version says, born from above. Emphasizing what all of Scripture emphasizes, that we are born again by God's hand. Through the power of the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Born from above. Nicodemus is confused. He, he asks a strange question. I think it's because he wants to know more. He knows that it can't happen. He says, how can a person be born again? You can't put a person back into the mother and then the person is born again. How is a person born again? Jesus talks to him then about the wind. Think of the wind. The wind blows, and it comes and goes where it pleases. Human beings can't control it. So it is with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit causes one to be born again. You don't see the Holy Spirit at work, but you know that the Holy Spirit is at work. When you see the wind and you can't see the wind, you see the effects of the wind. You see the leaves fluttering because of the wind. It's 
So it is with the Spirit. The Spirit's at work through the power of the Gospel. The Spirit brings to faith, causes one to be born again. And you see that as the person is brought to faith and then lives that new life in Christ. Uh, Nicodemus is starting to get it, but he's still having trouble. And Jesus continues to instruct him. Nicodemus. Oh, he was strengthened in his faith that God had given to him. As we see him later on, when Jesus is on the cross, and after Jesus dies, we have Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea taking care of Jesus' body, preparing it quickly for burial and then putting it into the tomb. But here we find Nicodemus is still confused. In, in fact, he's trying to fit everything into his human reason. If it doesn't make sense, then it can't be. This just doesn't make sense. That being born again from above is what you're saying, Jesus. You know, there are many people who want to put God into their human minds, into their human reason. And if they can't figure it out, it must not be true. Like, for example, when the Bible talks about how God created everything in six days. How can I believe that? It doesn't fit into my reason. I know what I'll do. I'll throw in evolution. Then it'll make sense to me. That is the temptation to think that we should be able to figure everything out about God and what he says in his word. But when God says it, it's true and God wants us to believe it. Another reason why people reject the word of God is because they want to have control. Actually, all of us want control at times. We want to be in control of our lives. Sometimes we hear people saying, you know, if you just work really hard and you're determined and steadfast, you can make things better for you. You can bring things to pass. Things will be all right if you just put the work into it and you're determined. It's all up to your control. And if it goes that route, some people really believe that it's all up to them. God isn't part of their lives. And that can bleed over into the spiritual world where a person would think, well, who needs God? I can do this on my own. I can win eternal life on my own. I can earn forgiveness on my own. Yeah, I mess up a few times, you know, but after all, I'm a pretty good person compared to other people. I don't, I don't need God. You know, deep down, everybody wants to be able to control their life and, and also to feel like they don't want to be dependent on other people. Oh, but it is extremely important that we are dependent upon God for salvation. God takes care of that. And He has taken care of that. He knows that if that would be for us to accomplish, we'd mess it all up. We'd fail. And so God took care of the problem. This is what it says in the scriptures in the Psalm 49. But no one can by any means redeem himself. He cannot give God a ransom for himself. Yes, the ransom for their souls is costly. Any payment would fall short. Whenever you hear about heaven and people who are trying to get in, whether it be a joke or whether it be a show that you're watching, isn't it so that they'll throw in how good you've been getting you into heaven? The pearly gates. You're standing at the pearly gates and God is asking you, what have you done to get into heaven? And oftentimes it'll promote works as a way to get into heaven. No way are you going to get into heaven by what you do. No way. But by God's gift in Christ, it's a free gift. No strings attached at all. This is a simple gospel, good news of salvation. Because it's so simple. Because it's so clear. There are those people who feel that they are so wise. That it just cannot be. It just doesn't fit into their wisdom. 
The Apostle Paul dealt with that, didn't he, when he said, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is all by God's power that we come to faith. He has caused us to be born again. The cross is a symbol of torture, isn't it? You think about it, it causes us to think of a bloody death, torturous death. But now, because Christ died for us on it, it is a symbol of God's glory symbol of the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. It is the power of God that has led us to believe to be born again. Not naturally. Did not come about by our ability. But spiritually, by the hand of God. It's a gift. Nicodemus was still having a hard time. So what did Jesus do? He took him to the Old Testament. And he took him to a time when the Israelites were in the wilderness and they had again been complaining and grumbling and murmuring against God and God's judgment came down on them. God sent venomous snakes which bit many and many died. And they cried out, the people cried out, save us. Moses, cry out to God for us. We have sinned. Moses did that. And then God said, Moses, put a bronze snake on a pole. And then tell the people that if they look at it, they will be saved. God was not advocating idolatry there. Absolutely not. You know that. He had attached to it a promise. You look at it and you are saved. Then Jesus takes us to the cross. And he said, just as Moses lifted up that bronze snake on that pole, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. And he's talking about on the pole of the cross. And as you look at him through the eyes of faith, you trust the promise of God because of the power of God's gospel. That in Christ your sins are forgiven and you are saved. You are saved. Why is it that God gave us salvation as a free gift? Why, why did he give it to all of those people in the Old Testament, all those people in the New Testament, to you and to me? It's because of grace. Love that we don't deserve. God is love, and he showers that on us as he gives us the gift of salvation in Christ, and he gives us the gift to believe it. Faith. Jesus described to Nicodemus the salvation and the miracle of being born again. And yes, it's a miracle. When he talked about how one is born again by water and the Spirit, referring to holy baptism, washed by the water and the Word, washed clean, forgiven, and given faith. Such a wonderful gift from God, isn't it? It's a gift. Trust it. Believe it. It's a gift. The Bible says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works. So that no one can boast. If eternity was up to our decision. Our ability to accept then it wouldn't be grace anymore. Then it would be by a work. If salvation was by our ability, then we would be taking away from the cross of Christ and everything that he accomplished. We would be reducing the glory and the power of Jesus' sacrifice for us. And it would lead us to boasting that in some way we have added to our salvation. But God says so clearly here that that is never the case. It comes by the hand of God. It comes as a gift from God. It says, Paul wrote to Titus, 
When God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Again, it's talking about baptism there. Baptism is that which God works through, washing away sins, giving and strengthening faith. God is at work through holy baptism. Why would we wait to have our children baptized? And God teaches us that he is at work through holy baptism. And from that point on, when we are born again in Christ, what are we now? We are a new creation. We have a new life to live for Christ each and every day. You are sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. What a blessing. Every believer in Christ is born again by the hand of God. God gives that miracle of faith. It, it, it is as much a miracle in an adult as it is in a baby because it is by the hand of God. Let me finish with that famous Bible passage because it sums it all up so well. As I read it, please note the emphasis. It is on God and God accomplishing our salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Thanks be to God the Father who sent his son. Thanks be to God the Son who redeemed us with his blood shed and his body given up in our place for the forgiveness of our sins. And thanks be to God the Holy Spirit who has given us the gift of faith by which we are born again. Oh, a gift from God and what a gift. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Together we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Motivated then by God's gifts, we cheerfully give our offerings to our Lord. And as we do, all our offerings are dedicated to our Lord. Those offerings given here and those given online, those dropped off. They come from hearts of faith and love. We sing the next hymn, which is hymn number 523, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
prayers for this evening. We include a prayer for Dar Darlene Kirshner, who will be undergoing surgery this week. You may remain seated for prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you and ask for, your, for you to be with Darlene Kirshner as she will be undergoing surgery this week. Help her to put her faith and her confidence fully in you as a great physician of both body and soul. Be with the surgeons, and if it be your will, grant her a swift recovery. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And O precious Savior Jesus Christ, you went the awful way to, of the cross because of your love for the Father and for us. We know that that way was made more bearable because of the Father's promise to exalt you in heaven. Ease our load of suffering and sorrow by virtue of the love you have for us and the hope of immortal glory you have given us. As you were glad to obey the will of your Father in order to save us from our sins, may we also be filled with a spirit of loving obedience that, is all, that always delights in doing his will. Teach us to know our needs and shortcomings, that we may always pray to the Father in your name for every needed blessing. Teach us to recognize our sins so that we will daily confess them and find forgive us, forgiveness. Teach us your new com commandment, that we may learn to love one another as you love us. In your name we pray, amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil who overcame us by a tree would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you've sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate word, conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. seated. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper and members of our church and church body come to Holy Communion, approach up the middle aisle and return, return by the side aisle. When indicated, kneel or remain standing at the rail. Receive the wafer with an open hand and take the wine cup yourself from the tray. If you'd prefer to be handed the wine cup, simply hold out your hand. Hold your wafer hand up like stop if you'd like a gluten-free wafer available in a sleeve on the tray. Non-alcoholic white wine is also available in the middle of the cup tray. Cup receptacles are along the walls. If you choose the common wine cup or chalice, please help by tipping it towards your mouth by holding the base. The general blessing will be given at the end of Holy Communion. Please come for all things are now ready.
Jesus Christ, strength and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in peace. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We will remain standing for the closing hymn verse. be seated. Good evening. It's great to have you all in worship this evening. Uh, just uh, We have a number of announcements this evening. So um, tomorrow, uh, between the services, if you'd like to come and join us for Bible class, we're continuing to, with the 10 lies about God. I believe we're finishing line number eight. Is that correct? Um, in that Bible study. So um, there'll be refreshments then uh, across the street in the um, school cafeteria. Also Sunday school down in the church basement with youth league Bible study um, down in the council chambers then. Uh, the call that we extended to be uh, to Stephanie Hill for early childhood director has been returned or declined then. Um, so because of that, we'll be having a call meeting this coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, then. So it's this coming Tuesday. Uh, the Senate said we kind of needed to move quickly with finding a date for that so we'd have candidates. So um, please come early. If you're going to Pioneers, come early and um, the children can come and they can sit in and see kind of how the church works. It's kind of a cool learning opportunity. Um, um, for them, um, and it should be a quick meeting then, and not too, t shouldn't take too long. So 6 p.m. on Tuesday in the school cafeteria then. Wednesday Bible studies continue there in the council chambers. Um, this Wednesday we have another Lenten service at 3.30. Grades 2 through 4 will be singing, and then also at 7 p.m. another service there. The children will not be singing at that service, but a meal in between, uh, between at 4.15 to 6 15 then. Do you know what the meal is for that? I don't know if the tacos are there. That sounds, that sounds good. So uh, tacos there on, um, for that meal then. Ladies' Night Out will be March 9th. There's more details in the bulletin. Um, that's a, uh, a group that's been meeting. It's open to anyone, just kind of a good fellowship time. So March 9th then, and look in the bulletin for more details on that. Easter flowers can be ordered. Uh, you can find more e details in the bulletin as well. Um, they need to be placed by March 8th then. Uh, the LPS Sacred Spring Concert will be March 5th in the gymnasium over at PrEP. Um, so if you're interested in that, that is at Luther PrEP then. And then also more items have been added to the wish list if you'd like to check that out. For those who are in the youth league or youth league age, um, we even count those who are going to be, who are in sixth grade going into seventh grade because this will be during the summer. Uh, we're planning a Six Flags trip so you can find more information in the bulletin on that for an initial sign up. We want to see how many people are coming to see if this is a, phys uh, a feasible trip then. So look for more information on that and please sign up so we can get a list of names. Those are all the announcements. Lord bless your evening.